Hi everyone, this is Zach. In this video lecture, I'll be talking about hierarchical clustering and how to do that in R. So to illustrate how this works, I'm going to use the famous IRIS dataset, which is a classic dataset for classification. It's, you know, as famous as Kim Kardashian, but, you know, for people who do machine learning basically. So this data set contains 50 instances each of three species of iris, and they're basically four columns, sepal length, sepal width, petal length, petal width, as well as a fifth column, which is the species. So an iris is a type of flower, uh, and these are the three different species, which all look pretty they, there's some similarities, of course, they're all purple with white and yellow, but there are also some very clear differences in how the shapes look like. And uh, just to note, there's the petal and then there's the sepal. So I'm not an expert in the bi in you know in flowers or anything, but the petal is basically the part that usually sur surrounds the like the nectar and the pollen and things. Whereas the sepal is kind of the usual, is in most flowers, I've read that it's green and it surrounds the flower before it's mature and as well as the bud, basically. So anyway, the, the main point is these are two different parts of flowers and the, uh, the very diligent person measured the lengths and widths and lengths and widths of the sepals and the petals for 150 flowers and wrote them down. So let's create a scatter plot matrix using the ggpairs function to take a look at what the data looks like. So you can see 16 different rectangles. Uh, the diagonal entries are basically uh, density plots, which is something like a histogram of the different uh, columns. So this is the density plot of sepal length, this is the density plot of sepal width, and so on. You also see the scatter plots, which are all possible pairs of different variables, sepal length and sepal width. Is this one, for example. And we also have the correlations between different variables. So for example, the correlation between sepal length and sepal width is about minus 0 0.1. So to illustrate hierarchical clustering, we'll keep things simple by focusing on only two variables, sepal length and sepal width. And the goal, our goal, is to divide the flowers into the three groups by the species. So again, let's take a look at the data focusing on sepal length and width only. Here I've used a jitter plot, which means that I add a little bit of noise to the x and to the y axis. And this is to avoid overlapping. So for example, these two blue and green points actually are on the same, have exactly the same measurements. So if you didn't use a jitter plot, you wouldn't see that there are actually two points there. You just see basically one because they kind of overlap. I think these three points are probably the same points too. Anyhow, if you look at the data where I've plotted the species by color, you can sort of see this, the three clusters. This is one cluster, this is another cluster of versicolor, and this is the cluster of virginica. However, there are some points around here which kind of overlap, and it's not going to be easy for the clustering algorithm to, dis, to figure out what is the correct species in between there. So in the previous video, I talked about normalization. Why normalization is a good idea is illustrated here. Uh, so before the normalization, you see that the standard deviation of sepal length is twice the standard deviation of sepal width. Basically, sep sepals tend to be longer than they are wide, and there's more variation there. So kind of to give equal weight to sepal length and width, you can do normalization so that now the mean is 0 and the standard deviation is 1. 
Let's take a look at the dendrogram, which gives us some clues about how many clusters to choose. So if you choose two clusters, that's quite a, a lot of separation between the two clusters. Or you could choose three, which, which has almost as much separation. And any other choice doesn't really seem quite natural. Uh, since there are three species of iris that we want to predict, it seems to be a good idea to choose three clusters, and that's what we're going to do. If you plot the results, you'll see that most cluster one is almost completely setosa, although one, uh, seto one unusual setosa flower got grouped into the second cluster, which is versicolor. By the way, here I'm using colors to denote the clusters, and I'm using shapes to denote the species. So it's not the same as the previous plot. So cluster 2 is mostly versicolor, and cluster 3 is mostly virginica. Cluster 2 has some virginicas hidden in, and cluster 3 also has some versicolors hidden in, although it's supposed to be mostly virginica. And I also created a table that kind of counts the number of species in each cluster. All right, it's time to take a look at some code so you know how to do it. All right, so you have to load the tidyverse. You also have to install a bunch of packages that I've already installed, but if you haven't installed them, then please install them first. All right, so uh, I'm going to convert the iris data frame into which is a built-in data frame into R, into a table, so that it prints a little bit nicer. And then here's how you make a scatterplot matrix using the ggpairs function. It takes a little bit of time to load, uh, but yeah, there you go. And here's how you draw a, a jitter plot. It looks exactly the same as geom points, except you replace geom points by geom jitter. And I wanted to make the points a little bit bigger so that when I write them to the file, so that it's easier for you guys to see it. All right, and if you look at the iris data frame before normalization, you'll see the summary statistics and the standard deviation. Here I use the summary summarize if function, which basically computes the standard deviation for every column that's numeric. All right, so here's how you pre-process the data using the pre-process function and the, and the predicts function. I don't really know what why it works, but it works. So just memorize this kind of recipe and just copy and paste it while changing the variable names appropriately. All right, after normalization, you see that the mean is zero and the standard deviation is 1. So here's how you perform hierarchical clustering. You compute the distances. In this case, we only want to use the first and second column, so that's why we wrote this here, first to second column. And then we're completing the distance using the Euclidean metric. And you can use the hclust function with the distances and Ward's method uh, for hierarchical clustering. You can plot a dendrogram using the ggdendrogram uh, function, and this is how you save it. All right, so let's group the points into three clusters. So you have to use the cut tree function to do that and to specify how many clusters you want. I converted, I decided to convert the clusters into factors because it plots better uh, when you set color equals to the f a factor. So it's different whether it's a factor or a number. And you can try it on your own. What happens if you don't assign it to be a factor? Right, so that's how you do it. You plot it, and voila. Finally, you can count the number of of 
observations where we got this value of species and this value of the cluster, like so. And you can also rearrange that into a nicer table like this. All right. Great. Okay, so to conclude, uh, you can use, create a scatter plot matrix that quickly allows you to visualize the relationships between the pairs of variables. And I also show you how to perform hierarchical clustering in R. It's not that difficult. After you spend a bit of time with it, I think you'll find it's pretty easy. All right, that's all for now. See you next time. Bye.